Are you broken? If you are, I have an answer. Wait, who is this guy? He must be some high flutin psychiatrist or something along the way like that. No. A lot of people, everybody, everybody has been broken or is broken. We've all been broken at some point in our lives. Some of us have learned to cope. Some of us have le learned to compartmentalize. I can never get that word right. We're able to lock it to a little tiny box. But eventually, that box is going to fall apart. And we truly didn't fix the problem. We didn't mend that brokenness. We have things in our lives all the time that cause us to be broken. And we have come up with so many ways in this world to cope with the brokenness. But it remains. It stays there. We've convinced ourselves that this medication will work. This therapist will work. This counselor will work. This psychiatrist will work. This new electric shock therapy. Okay, that's going back in time. It's going to help. Some new dieting routine is going to help. Maybe if I change my sleeping ha habits, that'll fix my brokenness. We've all lost a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a best friend. To cancer, to drugs, to alcohol, to suicide, to murder. There is brokenness all around. Brokenness is never going to just go away one day that suddenly there will be no brokenness. Well, spoiler, there will be a day. Not on this earthly realm that we think of today. But we never can fix the broken, can we? We have two societies, eh, three maybe. You have the secular society, and you have the Christian society, and you have the Bible believers society. It's a weird way of saying society. That'll be taken out of context. Um, there are people who seek God, thinking that may be the answer. So they go to the church buildings, and lo and behold, there are no answers. There are bumper stickers, t-shirts, catchphrases, light shows. you like, that's not for me. Then you go to a pious church. You go to that church where everybody, what I like to call the professional Christians. And they don't have the answers. They say, just be firm, stand up to it. That's not the answer either. That's not the answer. You see, there's a lot of fake empathy and sympathy in the church buildings. Why? Because the devil knows he can't completely get you out there, but if he can somehow twist in here, then we've got something. You see, nobody knows how to deal with the problem. They pretend they do because they went to Bible college. Now, I'm not insulting every single person in the world who's ever gone to Bible college. But you have these young guys who come out and they know life. If you are under the age of 40, I'll go under the age of 50, but definitely if you're under the age of 30, you have no idea. The vast majority of you have no idea. What broken is. So you have these self righteous Christians who listen to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I know. I understand. Do you? Do you understand? You don't understand. But instead of that pastor, that priest, or that preacher pointing you in the direction that can help. I don't mean just 
a person who may have gone through that. See, a lot of the church buildings, clearly no discipleship. And they only give you a little bit of the truth. But brokenness remains. You go to Sunday, nice sermon, wasn't bad, pretty good. Now don't take me wrong, uh, take it wrong. I'm not insulting every pastor, preacher, blah, 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 that's ever existed, that's ever behind a pulpit. I'm not saying every one of these guys have the intentions of being bad or, or are out to deceive you 100% of the time, a vast percentage of the time, a large majority of the time. But it's enough to get you to... Tuesday, maybe? Maybe even a Monday. Maybe by the end of that night, you're back to where you were before because you really didn't get anything. And week after week after week after week, you go, but you hear the same thing, and it's not conviction. So you're still broken. So these self-righteous Pharisees, these Christian Pharisees, pretend to care. Yes, am I a victim of that? Absolutely. But I've seen countless others who can't seem to get the answers. Nobody wants to really dive deep. Maybe they're ashamed to. Maybe they're afraid to offend. I don't care about offending. If you watch any of my videos, you know I pretty much don't care about offending people. Not because I want to offend. But in today's world, truth does offend. What kind of truth? Your truth we get into that circular uh, uh, argument. Rich people aren't all people going to heaven. And by the way, they're more broken than poor people. I say poor people, and again, oh, I'm insulting all the poor people. So I looked this verse up ahead of time because I want to make sure where it was in, in Matthew. And I'm just going to read it real quickly. Matthew, King James Bible, chapter 9, verse 11. Let's go to uh, 10, actually. And it came to pass... Uh, I'm going to go back, back, even back one more verse in 9. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Oh, shock. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. Yeah, go learn what that meaneth. You know, I guess if you follow me, you know, the law, you know, Moses' law, you, got, you know, you might want to read that Bible again, or, or what you had back then, the Torah. You might want to read those words. Check out Isaiah, it's pretty interesting. Jeremiah. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. So you're broken. You've gone everywhere to everybody under the sun. But you didn't turn to Jesus. Because the hardest thing to do is let go. We have a lot of things in our lives we need to let go of. And Jesus is helpful. Very, very helpful. After all, he is God manifest in the flesh. So he kind of knows a few things. There he's nothing that he can't do. He can do all things that men cannot do, but pretend that they can. He can't heal you. These these people in the uh, uh, building can't heal your leg, and it just stretches out. And if you're broken, 
Call upon his name and you will be saved. Sincerely. Ask him. Just open the door. Just open the door and ask him. Because he'll come in. And he'll change your life in a way that you've never even dreamed of. Oh, and by the way, when I say that, it doesn't mean no problems will come. That's a fallacy. If you're broken, and most people are, Steve, are you broken? There are pieces that I need to fix, yes. The vase is almost put together. I've glued everything there. There's just a couple tiny little pieces left, and I've got to get those together. I don't know if that was a terrible reference, you know. A broken face. Consider your life like a broken face. You've got cracks. You've got scars that need to be healed. One can do it. Jesus can do it. Anthony Robbins and all these idiots, they can't do that. They're not going to heal your bank account because they took all your money. Turn to Jesus. Repent from your sins. It'll be hard at first. Absolutely. That's the other thing they don't tell you. It's going, ah, you got this. It'll be easy. It's going to be unbelievable. It's such a change, a transformation. Life will be beautiful. Life will be beautiful. But it's not as easy as it sounds at first. That's a lot of things in your life. And that's where discipleship sometimes comes in. They don't teach you that there are a lot of things that you're going to have to let go of. People you're not going to talk to anymore. Places you're not going to go anymore. Hobbies and things that you once liked, you cannot anymore. Of the world? I don't think so. In the world, we have to be. So if you are broken, you can be fixed. There are going to be a lot of pieces, a lot of cracks, a lot of little shards of vase that have to be glued together. And I know it's a, I don't know, probably not the best analogy that I can use, but that's what I got. And I'm going to end it right there. Because this was really, I wasn't really planning for this, except for I looked up the verse. I wasn't, this was not the video I was going to make tonight. I had something else on my mind. But as I said to somebody in an email, I says, listen, when the Holy Spirit talks to you, or asks you to go somewhere, you run. And I'm doing what I'm told to do. Good night.